Welcome to At Issue. I'm H. Wayne Wilson. We're going to be talking about a process that most of us look upon with disdain. That is the process of gerrymandering political districts. Gerrymander, of course, comes from Elbridge uh, Jerry, uh, Jerry, Jerry of Massachusetts from decades and years, centuries ago. Nonetheless, we all use it to our political gain. We're going to talk about a process that may change that in the state of Illinois. And to have that conversation, I've invited Michael Kolentz to join us. He's the campaign manager for an organization called Yes for Independent Maps. We'll explain what that group is in just a moment. Thank you for being with us, Michael. Thank you. And a familiar face to Central Illinoisans, Brad McMillan, who is with the Bradley University Institute for Principled Leadership, where he is the executive director. Thank you again for joining us on Ad Issue. Thanks, H. Uh, gerrymander. Uh, it's a, there's no way you can look at that word and say that's a good term. Uh, why has that been around for so long? Why haven't we gotten upset about it before? Well, or maybe we have gotten upset and we just haven't done enough. Well, I, I think that's the point. Uh, you know, I think voters are fed up with these, you know, crazy shaped districts uh, that make no common sense. I mean, to the voters, they look at these uh, uh, these lines that are drawn and and just you know shake their heads and and uh, are very upset. Uh, but I think part of it, part of the problem is is the voters don't realize that that in Illinois, at least, they can change this themselves, uh, and that we don't need the Illinois legislature uh, uh, to change the system. And so that's what Yes for Independent Maps. Uh, is trying to do. Before we talk about the change, would you be kind enough to explain the current system? Who picks the boundaries? Yeah, well right now we have political leaders sitting in Springfield in a, behind closed doors with special interests and lobbyists that are actually drawing these maps. So rather than voters across the state being able to pick their state legislators, you have a select few in Springfield being able to, to select you. And that's, that is, it is wrong, it is a wrong way to do the map making process. And yes, for independent maps, a coalition, a very, very broad coalition of organizations and individuals aims to correct that with a ballot measure, with an amendment to the Illinois Constitution to implement an independent redistricting system that will change the way we draw state maps, that will make... I want, I want to talk yeah. about the comparison, but yeah. how do they draw the maps right now? You, you, you know what? We, no one knows because no one's ever been, a, been able to go into the room. It is, a, it is literally a locked room that is, that is guarded. And they, they draw maps where, you know, if, if I voted for something or if I piss someone off or if I'm in the, the party that is not in power, I get punished. And the party in power, is an, it's incumbent protection every 10 years where the political leaders in my party will draw me a favorable map and they will slice up neighborhoods. They'll use the most up-to-date technology and use streets to pick up, uh, you know, subdivisions and peoples and to really give me a, a padded, a padded victory on election day. So the current process actually, as I read it, protects the incumbent? Absolutely. I mean, all you have to do is look after the 2010 census where the latest round of this seriously flawed redistricting process was used. You know, we had 97 percent of incumbents re-elected in Illinois, and two-thirds of our uh, incumbents didn't face uh, challengers. Uh, you know, H, this is simply not good democracy. I don't think Illinoisans are 97 percent happy with the job that uh, the Illinois General Assembly is doing. Uh, they're, they're drawing these districts to protect themselves, and the bottom line is it's not in the public best interest. So. With that as background, mm -hmm. Yes for Independent Maps is going to do what? So right now we're collecting signatures to put a ballot measure on the November 2014 ballot that will amend the Illinois Constitution to take away the power from political leaders to draw these maps and put it in the hands of an 11-person independent commission that will draw maps with nonpartisan criteria in a 100% transparent fashion. And those 11 people are going to come from where? They'll come from across the state. So our, our measure, the measure that, that the Yes for Independent Maps Coalition is putting forward is really mirrored after the California initiative that passed in 2008. So in Illinois, anyone can apply to be on this commission except 
people that have been elected to office at the lowest or the highest levels in the state, state employees, uh, state lobbyists, federal lobbyists, and people that have contracts with the state, and, and people that live under the same roof as any one of those individuals. And then for a period of 10 years after you serve on this commission, you cannot run for state office, nor can you be appointed to any position in the state that requires Senate confirmation. So it really takes out the ability for bad actors to game the system for their, for their political benefit or the political benefit of a political party or a group. So you've uh, painted a, a picture where some people are eliminated, but still that leaves millions of people. Absolutely. is absolutely. eligible other than that, right? Yes, so absolutely. That's millions of people. That are, that, are, that are interested and want to sit on a commission to help draw maps. Do they, do they apply? They apply. So in California, they saw 30,000 people send in applications to the state to sit on this independent commission. You know, we, who knows how many people will see apply here. But the fact is that it'll be an open process that anyone can apply to unless you have a conflict of interest and you're conflicted out of sitting on this commission. You know, it's a commission made up of four Democrats, four Republicans, and three non-affiliated. To approve any map, you need two Democrats, two Republicans, and two non-affiliated to vote yes for a map. And once it's voted yes, it's the law of the land. I still don't understand who's picking the 11. So the measure says that the Auditor General is, is responsible for setting up a, a human resources commission, in essence, a, com a three-person commission that is supposed to intake all these resumes. The intake of resumes, the data that are on the resumes and the applications, and the process of, of sifting through them, all open meetings. Anyone can see this information that, what, that wants to. So this, this three-person panel will be responsible for picking the 100 most qualified people out of this pool, taking out everyone that has a conflict, conflict of interest or is not qualified to, to be on this commission. They'll come up with this pool of 100 people. From there, we have the four legislative leaders come in. They each get to take out five people from this pool. So you have a pool of 80 now. So in theory, the leaders from the Democratic Party will take out their most partisan Republicans and vice versa. So with the, from the pool of 80, you have a lottery now. So the Auditor General's office will draw names out of this pool until you have two Republicans, two Democrats, and three non-affiliated people. Three of those people are from Cook County, and then one each from the other judicial districts in the state. So now we have, we have a couple seats left. You bring in the, the four leaders, and you say each of you get to pick one person, but it has to contribute to the demographic or the geographic diversity of this panel, and that's how you come up with your 11-person commission. It's, it's a, it is a long process, but it is a long process and a complicated process on purpose because we want there to be faith in this map-making process because right now there is not. And when you refer to the districts, you're referring to Supreme Court districts. There are four downstate Correct. Supreme Court districts mm -hmm. and then the rest up in Chicago. Yes. So, Brad, we, we understand now how we get to the 11 member group that then will sit down and draw the boundaries every 10 years. Are there some rules that they will work by? Absolutely, there's, there's very specific criteria uh, that's laid out in the constitutional am uh, amendment. They have to try to protect uh, communities of interest, uh, geographic uh, interests uh, and uh, also, uh, they have to make sure and protect minority voting rights uh, under the, the Federal Voting Rights Act. Uh, you know, I think what you're going to end up seeing, H, and again, it's really important uh, for your viewers to understand, uh, we really looked at uh, redistricting reforms going on across the country, and we tried to take the best uh, practices uh, from those reform efforts to fashion uh, the Yes for Independent Maps uh, Independent Commission. Uh, this is the fairest, best process uh, that you could possibly come up with. And uh, what you're going to end up seeing is you're going to end up seeing much more reasonably shaped uh, state legislative districts that are more balanced uh, politically. Uh, because, you know, you, talk, you started off the show talking about the current process and gerrymandering. What really happens with the political leaders when they draw these maps is they go street by street and they look at your voting history. And it's all about power and control. And what they're trying to do is make sure that a district is 65% either Democrat or Republican based on past voting history. And that's how you get these incumbents 
getting reelected at these very high numbers uh, here in Illinois. With the transparent process that we're talking about, with the independent commission, with complete transparency, you're going to get rid of that partisan bias uh, that we've seen. And, and this is not, this is just for state, the, the, the legislature, not for Congress. Right. And, and, you know, to be honest with you, that pains me greatly. But uh, under the Illinois Constitution, uh, we can only bring a constitutional amendment to change the structure or the process of the Illinois General Assembly. Now, we believe that if we get this ballot initiative uh, on the ballot in November 2014 and that it passes, that ultimately there'll, there'll be pressure that will come to bear on the Illinois congressional map drawing process. Because the Illinois General Assembly has the approval, the voting approval of the congressional maps. And if all of a sudden the Illinois General Assembly is, uh, has to go through this very transparent, fair process, uh, I think there'll be public pressure and political pressure to eventually change the congressional map drawing process as well. We just can't include it in the actual language of the constitutional amendment. Let me talk about what we might see because the, the requirements as, as they are roughly drawn out mm -hmm. right now, we, we don't know the wording of the constitutional amendment yet, do we? We don't know, we don't know the wording of the, the title that will appear on the ballot. We have, we have the 1500 word amendment, we're actively circulating it right now, but the, sh the short description that will appear before the voters, we're not, we do not know yet. And that has to be approved by the Attorney General? Correct. But in those 1500 words, mm -hmm. it calls for creating districts to preserve the voting rights of minorities mm -hmm. and to respect community and geographic boundaries. Mm -hmm. in, those, in, in addition to respecting communities that share an economic or a social interest, and in, including not drawing maps to discriminate in favor or against any one political party, nor drawing maps based on where any one person lives. So you can't draw a map based on where, where a politician lives or where someone's mother-in-law lives or anything. So given all that, yeah. we're not going to see nice rectangular we will, districts. We will, not see, we will not see nice, perfect rectangle districts or circle districts. You know, some of, these, some of these districts will not be pretty, but you will know that they are not dividing up communities of interest on purpose for a, for a political purpose, to, to harm or to help a, a candidate. So what kind of input have, have Illinoisans had mm -hmm. into the process and how much input will they will they have moving forward? Yes. So this was a two-year process to develop this ballot measure. So so when when Brad says that that this is the most con, con, conclusive search would happen to really make sure that this amendment was fantastic and really perfect for Illinois, it, that is no that not an exaggeration. Spent th this coalition spent two years really studying best practices across the country, looking at what worked and what didn't figuring out how to make it work within the confines of the Illinois Constitution, talking to political leaders, business leaders, civic leaders, to really figure out how we build a coalition, how we build an amendment, how we really fix what's going on with this, with this problem. And that, that is what we think we have today. So if we have a coalition, I assume this is a bipartisan effort. There's people from all walks of life. It, it truly is, uh, H. Uh, we, uh, we have David Axelrod, we have uh, Dan Rutherford, a Republican gubernatorial candidate, we have independents, we have, you know, a wide array of uh, organizations, you know, the State Chamber of Commerce, the Illinois League of Women Voters. Uh, this is a very broad-based bipartisan uh, coalition uh, that is, is, has come together. This is about good government. And, you know, all of us complain about the mess that Illinois is in. This is something that we, the voters, we, the citizens of Illinois, can do to turn Illinois back to better government. And uh, in my view, it's the most essential uh, reform that needs to happen uh, to move Illinois back in a better direction. In past conversations I've had with you, Brad, we talked about an organization called Change Illinois with regard to redistricting, but that organization isn't leading this effort. It's Yes for Independent Maps, which Correct. you are the campaign manager for. Correct. So why 
did we have this change? You know, campaign finance laws are a funny thing in this state, and once an organization or an entity spends over a certain amount of dollars, I believe it's $3,000 for or against a ballot measure, a separate, a, a new entity called a ballot measure, ballot initiative committee has to be set up. So that's where Yes for Independent Maps comes in. And Change Illinois, which led led this effort for the past two years, is, is a part of this coalition. It was, as, as well as Common Cause and League of Women Voters and the Chamber of Commerce and a host of other groups and individuals. So they uh, originated the Correct. Process, they, led, they led the drafting. But the law of, doesn't allow them to carry forth on it. Correct. So Yes for Independent Maps mm -hmm was created, it's a 501c3? It's, it is a ballot, in, ballot initiative committee is how we're defined by okay. state law. We report to the state. We're li like any other political committee, uh, any other political campaign, that's, that's the easiest way to think about it. So like a campaign, it's a, it's a temporary endeavor. I have to report all financial contributions that we receive on a quarterly basis or a pre-election basis. Any campaign contribution we receive and put in the bank of $1,000 or over, we have to report it within five days. So. The same way you would think about a gubernatorial campaign is is the easiest way to think about about the campaign that Yes for Independent Maps is running. You're talking about money. Where's the money come from? Yeah, money comes from just like a political campaign. We have to go out and 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 hit the pavement and work and get the phones and ha take meetings with people that are interested in making Illinois better. And you know, sometimes that money comes from organizations. Sometimes it comes from individuals. Um, we have have our work cut out for us. This is a a difficult issue to talk about and there's a lot of vested interest in this state for the status quo. So raising money is difficult, but it is something that we're committed to doing. You know, in order to be successful, we need to reach our, our, our goals. No public dollars are involved in this? None. So the goal is to have approximately 298,000 signatures by May 4. Yeah, we're, we're, we're actually, our goal H is 500,000 because uh, we want to give ourselves enough of a cushion for any petition challenges that, that, that might come our way. So our, our goal is to get a half million signatures by May 4th. And um, we're going to be having a, a regional meeting uh, next week, January 23rd, at the downtown Peoria Public Library at 4 for any interested uh, viewers that want to volunteer to help this important cause will actually be handing out petitions, will be handing out instructions, uh, and then we also have uh, our website uh, is independentmaps.org and you can go and you can read all about the uh, constitutional amendment, the coalition members, and you can actually sign up on that website to volunteer and to have petitions mailed to your house. Uh, we need uh, good citizens to step up to the plate and help us uh, get this on the ballot. That's what we really want. We want this on the ballot so that Illinois voters can decide next November whether or not this redistricting process should be changed. How far along are you? We're making fantastic progress. So we are well along and well on our way to reaching our goal uh, before May 4th. Would you like to be more specific? No, I would not. <laughs> Thank you, though. <laughs> but you we, said this was an open process. It, it is an extremely open process, but like any campaign, there are trade secrets, and you know there are things that, that we like to keep very close to the vest. We will say that we are making extreme progress toward our goal. You know, We have sent out o far over 30,000 petition sheets to people that have come to our website or coalition organizations. So that is 30,000 30, plus petitions that are circulating around right now. Plus we have a very extensive paid program that's based in our Chicago office where we send out 30, 40 people six and seven days a week to collect signatures. So this is a process that, that takes time, that takes patience, and it takes a lot of hard work. But it is a process that this coalition believes is doable and we fully intend to reach our goal before the May 4th deadline. And this is like any other ballot initiative. Uh, you have to be a registered voter and you have obviously in the state of Illinois. Right. And it is open to challenge. It is open to challenge. But you can, uh, if you choose to carry one of our petitions, you, as long as somebody is a registered voter in the state of Illinois, you can get their signature anywhere in the state. So 
you know, if you're up in Chicago visiting family and they're a registered voter in, in Chicago, you can get them to sign. If you're here in Peoria or Tazewell, there's, uh, just as long as they're a, a registered voter in the state of Illinois, you can get their signature. And, you know, I, I think this is pretty simple. Um, you know, if you think about it, H, and, and the numbers of signatures we need, uh, I've committed uh, to getting 100 uh, signatures. If we had 5,000 citizens out of the 12.88 million that are in Illinois, 5,000 each get 100 signatures, by May 4th we'd reach our uh, half million goal. So how well are you doing? I'm doing very well. <laughs> he won't reveal you know, a You know, I'll, I'll, I'll <laughs> say this, that you know, part of the challenge that this coalition had in the beginning was to set up a statewide infrastructure that could, that could gather all these signatures, but not only gather the signatures, be around after May 4th, because there is a, there is a campaign to happen, and a statewide campaign is not an easy endeavor to, to, to set out on. So right now, we're actually working to build a in a, a vast network of volunteers across the state. We have 25 regional volunteer teams. The Peoria team is a very good example of, of the way a team should work. We have volunteers here that are taking the lead on efforts to collect signatures in, in the Peoria area. They organize the volunteers, they recruit more volunteers, they, they set up meetings where they're taking in petitions and they're notarizing petitions and they're giving marching orders that we're going to go to a basketball game or a craft fair or a farmer's market, well at least not right now with a farmer's market, but you, you, get, the, you get the idea of how these, these regional teams work and that's just one component of, of this campaign that we're building. So, uh, when, when does this go into effect? Let's assume that the petitions are mm -hmm. accepted, it's on the ballot, yep. it's passed by citizens in November. Mm -hmm. When does it become effective? This will not go into effect until after the 2020 census. So, 2020 every, census, every 10 years. yeah, it'll be every 10 years. We are not in any way asking for a mid decade redraw of the maps. Brad, there was an effort uh, not too long ago, I think it was called Fair Map, right. uh, very similar in nature, and it failed to achieve the signature requirement. What happened then that you think, what, what's the difference between the two efforts? Well, I served on the Illinois Reform Commission where the redistricting reform first surfaced and there's two ways you can change it in Illinois. One is through a legislative constitutional amendment and one is through a citizen-led constitutional amendment. The Reform Commission in good faith tried to work with the Illinois General Assembly on getting this changed uh, and it didn't happen. So the last time around, Fair Map only had five months to gather all of the signatures. We didn't have the organization. We didn't have the resources. Yes for Independent Maps is a completely different effort. We have a great statewide campaign organization, paid staff. We have an outside firm that we've hired that has done ballot initiatives in California and Oregon. We have 20 regional teams set up. We're raising money uh, and we have a whole lot more time uh, to get this accomplished. Regardless of the process, mm -hmm. the bottom line is to make legislators more responsive to the electorate. Mm -hmm. What, and I, I hate to use the word guarantee, but what faith do you have that that actually will happen, that if it passes 2020, mm -hmm. new set of map drawing standards, yeah. And will we have a more responsive legislature? I think we'll absolutely have a more responsive legislature. You know, we just have to look at the example of California. Uh, and I mentioned earlier that the, the ballot measure that change Illinois worked on is very much mirrored after the California initiative. And they saw a tone change from 2008 to 2012 where you know the the California government was no longer shutting down, where the the legislature in Sacramento was now working together in a more bipartisan format, where they were actually getting bills passed, and and while this coalition will never take a policy position on any issue, we do say that a legislature that works together and that is making progress or make, moving bills or getting things done is something that we can probably all agree is a good thing. Michael Colins, uh, campaign manager for Yes for Independent Maps. Thank you for joining us on At Issue. Thanks for having me. We appreciate it. And Brad McMillan, as always, it's always good to have you on yeah. At Issue. Pleasure, Brad H. Brad is the executive director for the Bradley University Institute for Principled Leadership. And with that, we have two programming notes to pass along to you. Next week, there will be no At Issue. 
However, you will see a gubernatorial debate. As I speak, we will have three of the four candidates. Bruce Rauner has not agreed to appear on that debate. We are still asking him to participate, but the other three candidates will be here in the WTVP studios. However, this is broadcast statewide on all the NPR and PBS stations. It will be from 7 to 9 p.m. next Thursday, the 23rd of January. Following that, on January 30th, two weeks from now, we will have Congresswoman Sherry Bustos representing the 17th Congressional District, which is part of Peoria, part of Rockford, and the Quad Cities area. Join Sherry Bustos and me for At Issue in two weeks, and we'll see you on the debate that I moderate in one week. Thank you for joining us on At Issue.